team. Speed versus power. What's the difference? When to use it? How to improve it? Stick around to the end of the video where I'll give you some exercises to improve both of them. Let's get to work. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. First off, this video is not sponsored by anyone. I have no affiliation with anyone. I just want to say I popped two geezers yesterday, which is our local pro shop, and I got these rival Mexican wraps. Hardly recommend these. Put them through a couple of rounds yesterday and today as well. Very, very comfortable. Some of the most comfortable wraps I've ever had. There's no link in the description for them because I don't have any sponsorship on, but they're super, if you're not trying them, Try it. Recommend it. Very, very good. Very, very comfortable. Anyway, speed, power. So technically speaking, the mathematical equation for power is speed times mass. That is correct. The quicker an object gets out of as much weight behind it as possible, it's going to produce power. And I'm not even an intelligent man, but that's the, that's the equation, speed times mass. However, the way I look at things, whether it's right or wrong, so I look at speed as volume punching, and I look at power punching as more of a set and drive. So you only got to think of people like Manny Pacquiao. So when I'm volume punching, we'll do a couple of drills in a second and we'll put them on the bag as well. I do a lot of um, foot strike and hand strike as well, and I don't fully commit to my rotations. Um, I have no idea what punches I'm going to throw right now, but I'm just going to do a lot of foot striking and I'm going to throw a lot of straight punches in some kind of combination. I don't fully commit to like the massive rotations. So from there, speed. I'm breathing all the way through that. From here, and my foot striking is going as well. And you can work out any kind of combination on the bag. In fact, let's just have a quick look. I just mentioned geezers, didn't I? I've had these gloves from geezers for about, I don't know, about eight, nine months now. Lace-ups, some of the best gloves I've ever had as well. Check them out. Right, so speed. I'm, I'm not gonna do anything fantastic on the bag. I'm just gonna work volume punches. Um, so I'm not thinking about power, I'm thinking about getting my hands out, but I do foot strike with that all of the time. I'm not just stood there going, because that's a bit, you know what. So volume punch, and again, think Manny Pacquiao, or anyone like that, to a sense as well, Lomachenko does it, he, he volume punches a lot, it's not, I know Southpaw flicks that jab lot, that's not technically 100% correct at all, is it? That is, flicks that jab out, foot striking while he's moving around. So I also use, or I used to use speed and volume punching a lot to engage someone's hands. Get them up, control the lanes a little tiny bit while you're looking to create angles. So while you're working on a bag, work your straights. Work your foot striking, same hand, same foot. Work volume and work quickly, but also don't, you know, watch for the commons. No hands down there. So it's just nice and quick, you're not looking to punch through this bag, you've got to think of its speed. Work your straights, work your foot striking, think about speed, it will happen. Let's move on. So I look at power shots as being a bit more planted to the ground. You look at some of the greats from the old days who had the real big backhand, southpaw or orthodox, back foot was planted, usually at 90 degrees as well, and they're really driving through everything, devastating punches, and not little light punches from here, it's driven from the whole body, Hips coming through, the knees coming through, hips coming through, shoulders coming through, good release, and they're committing weight to that. So there's an element of speed needed for that. I'm gonna drive out. However, uh, George Foreman, one of the heaviest punches in history. He wasn't particularly quick, was he? Boom! But he was putting all of his weight behind all of them shots. I forget what his knockout rate was. 
Someone remember to put it in the comments below. But yeah, he had a huge knockout rate, but he wasn't particularly quick. He was a slugger. But it's the same with all these. Uh, if we're gonna get some heavy hooks in, you've gotta turn your body into the punch. Yeah, so a lot of people say from a right-handed point of view, you're gonna put your heart into a left hook. <laughs> yeah, if I'm not putting my heart into that, <laughs> I've got no body weight behind that shot. So we're going to put my shoulder into it. These are planted shots. So you don't always want to be working heavy, heavy shots because it's going to be a little bit slower than when you're working your speed work. Okay, because you want to drive. You have to push, commit weight forwards. Let's look at some heavy shots on the back. So remember, everything starts and finishes with your foundation. You need to have that good foundation on the ground. So again, when I'm talking about power shots, I'm probably not going to have like the more amateur style footwork in here. I'm going to be more planted and I'm going to commit everything to that shot. It's probably going to be a little bit slower. Bear in mind, I'm only a little dude. So I'm never going to produce a heavyweight's power, okay? But I can go light and quick, yeah, touch, touch. Or I can slow it down a little tiny bit in the respect that I'm going to commit more weight to it from there and deliver a heavier shot. So that's one way to think about it. Light and fast, it's not slow, it's more commitment to heavy. You want to be a little bit more planted. Yeah, I can throw a nice light rear hook, or I can commit a bit more to it from there. Same with the lead hook, although you all know by now if you've been following this channel that this arm is really, really damaged, so I'm not going to do too much with that because it hurts and I'm weak. <laughs> so you can mix the two things together, and we'll have a look at that in a second, but Sit down on your punch, if you're looking for power, fully commit. You know, if you're punching square, you're not fully, I'm gonna put a hand out of the way so you can see. I haven't fully committed my body weight to that punch. Yeah. If you are leaning, pushing your bum backwards, you haven't committed your body weight to that punch. And it's always gonna be, why can't I punch harder? Because you're not committing yourself to that shot. Just by adding a little bit of weight to that, I'm going to do the worst tech. Don't criticize this technique, I'm doing this deliberately. Okay, I'm going to stand here and I'm literally going to push through, but put some weight behind the shot. It's not going to be a proper sharp technique from there. It's a fairly hard shot because I've committed. Hip came through, shoulder came through, weight transferred forwards onto my front foot, managed to hit quite hard. So that's how much you've got to commit wait to a shot to get some power. So what's the key then? The key is being able to mix up the two styles, speed and power. Being able to volume punch and settle and throw that big shot. Use your volume shots to change lanes and maybe work that shot in from a power shot. What do I mean by that? You hear me speak about Lomachenko a lot. I think he's one of the greatest fighters that we've had in a long time, personally. Um, you must have seen him, do, he's not the only one who does it. I'll do it southpaw just like he does, okay? So I'm gonna do this slowly, but he does it quickly. He fires volume punches at you while you've got your, your hands high, you've got your guard high, and all of a sudden, his rear hand, his left hand, come around and like swipe that uh, hand down, and he'll throw a big shot in. But don't forget, he is a he's a right-handed southpaw. So that's his power hand. So we hear, bah, 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 and I throw that big shot. So he's quick, foot striking, hands are going, and all of a sudden he settles, whips, throws that big shot. So any of the type of combinations that you might be thinking about, what we call tap and whack. I'm not committing too much to that jab. I'm getting your hands high and throwing that big shot on the end. So there's foot striking. Quick foot strike, settle, drive. Now, any combination you can think of where I'm just that power shot on the end. So let's have one last little look on the bag at how we can mix the two together. 
Then we'll have a quick look at some exercises that you can do to improve your speed and your power. Something as simple as moving around the bag, volume punching with your jabs, <laughs> settle in for that big back hand. Yeah, so here. Break that down a bit slower. Volume, 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 settle. Body weight commits. We literally just spoke about what Lomachenko does. Body weight. <laughs> Yeah, lots of people do that sort of thing. So you can really work your bag rounds, mixing the two volumes together. Don't just get caught in that habit of just going, or just everything has to be a life-ending, soul-destroying punch. Because you're going to burn yourself out a lot. Tap and whack. Choose where you're going with it. Volume shots. Big shots. Exit, change lanes, work a new angle. Let's have a look at some exercises, team. So, the classics. Power comes from the ground, through your legs, through your hips, through your shoulders, and out of your hands. So we want some explosive movement in our legs. It's as simple as that. Super basic, super easy, particularly if you're a beginner, you may have seen these before, you may not. The basic jump squat. This should become a staple of your training to help you deliver more, more dynamic power from your legs. It's just a case of driving, I like to start them with what I call box squats. Hands up, chin down, elbows tight, then elbows to knees, because you do see a lot of people cheat. They go like this. That's not a squat, that's a bend from the waist. Yeah, hands up, chin down, elbows tight. Drive it up. Split lunges with a jump, also good plyometric movement, a split lunge. Split the legs. I'm gonna keep my back straight, L, uh, knee touches the ground, and as I come back up, push up, off that leg. Same on the other side, left leg forwards, right knee touches the ground, I drive off this leg, just pushing myself all the body weight off the ground. That's great for working the explosive muscles needed to drive. And of course, you can do that with what we call jumping lunges. They're all going to help deliver stronger punches for when you want to hit hard. Let's look at a speed drill. Shadow boxing with weights will improve your speed. Okay, you'll feel like you're slower to start with. You will be, because you're carrying more weight. Do a couple of good technique, there's no point. I've said this in a previous video. I'll leave a link to the description below about snatch shadow boxing. These are literally one kilogram weights, okay? I've got some two kilograms over there. I know I'm old. I know I'm quite weak, because <laughs> of damage and that. But midway through, one or two rounds with a two kilo, my hands start coming down here. Because it's too heavy, okay? It wants to be a weight that you can keep good foundation, fundamental technique all the way through and not <coughs> hands down here. Good, proper technique so the weight's not too hard. Do a couple of rounds with your, with your weights. Get rid of them, do another round and see how much quicker your hands are. <laughs> They'll be a lot quicker. Tennis balls. They're another great one to help you with your speed, your reactions, your hand-eye coordination. So let's have a quick look at that. A trusty tennis ball. Now, there's a couple in my pockets as well, because I'm not going to edit this if this goes wrong, just to prove that it can be quite difficult to do. 
So if you do have a go at this and you can't do it, it's okay. I can't do it all the time either. Tennis balls, a couple of drills you can do to improve your speed. If you're right-handed, put your right hand on your chin, left hand out in front. Now, what it's not is I'm not gonna drop the ball and try and underhand catch it. I'm gonna drop the ball and I'm gonna try and catch the ball with a punch type motion. I may get it first time, I may not. We shall see. Got it first time. So as far as trying to do that powerfully, there's no way I'd get there in time. The ball would drop and uh, it's not gonna work. I need to think about speed to do that. So therefore it's that nice and light, relaxed catch. Another great drill for you to do is to bounce the ball. And you can work this into like some shadow boxing as well. So I'm gonna work my backhand again, I'm gonna bounce the ball, and then I'm gonna punch and catch it from here. So I'm shadow boxing. And work the ball from there. There's lots you can do with it. If you've never done this before, give it a go. It can't fail. If you put it into your training routine regularly enough, it can't fail to increase your speed. Because you've got to get out of it. Let's be honest, if I try and do it slowly, ain't gonna happen, is it? I have to work my speed. Give it a go, team. Let me know how you get on with that in the comments. It will improve your speed. So let's just recap there then, team. You can be a speed puncher and you can be a power puncher. You hear people, they categorize themselves. Oh, I'm a speed puncher. Oh, I'm a power hitter. You can be both. You just need to know the difference between the two. As I said, if you're speed punching, think volume. I'm not fully committing my rotation. If I was to try and do a one, two, one, two, and fully commit my rotations uh, as fast as I can, it's gonna look like it's gonna be slower than if I just go. <laughs> yeah, so that's volume and speed. If I want to do those volume punches and all of a sudden <clears throat> drive, I set my feet and drive and commit body weight behind it. Have a look at those drills as well. Definitely get a tennis ball. They're cheap. Okay, if you don't have anywhere to train, you can go to a park, you can do it at home. Probably don't do it in front of a window or a TV though, just in case you get it wrong. It's going to help improve your hand-eye coordination. It's going to help improve your speed. It's going to improve your focus. And improve your fitness, because that's just a little bit fun. You'll want to do it for quite a while. You'll work your fitness from there. So, work your speed. Work your power. Combine the two. Volume your punches. Put a power shot on the end. Create different angles and work again. Until next time, train hard, train safe, and I'll see you soon.